December 3rd, 2018. This is the Board of Trustees of Miami Township. All right, we have three trustees. We have a fire chief. We have a road administrator. <laughs> Chris Glosser. And we swap tonight's zoning uh, inspector meeting for next uh, December 17th, I think. I can I would entertain a motion to adopt the minutes meeting for November 19th, 2018. Second. Mr. Crockett moves. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Maybe none. Maybe we vote, please. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. We also have the minutes this evening for a special meeting of November 28th. Is there a motion to approve those? I so move. Mr. Crockett second moves. Mr. Crockett seconds. Any further discussion regarding those minutes? Maybe none. Maybe we vote, please. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Now I contain a motion to approve the payment of the bills in the amount of $32,707.48. General fund contributions $35,43.14. Fire fund $16,689.57. Cemetery $132.08. EMS billing $8,574.15. Capital project zero. This is our motion. Who? I think we spoke up mm -hmm. simultaneously. I'll defer to right. seniority um, basis. Make that motion. Cross seconds. <laughs> Mr. Alter seconds. Any further discussion regarding payment of those accounts? Hearing none, may we vote, please? Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Correspondence for the uh, period. We have uh, OTA grassroots clipping. We have the Council Land Trust uh, Fall 18 newsletter. We have some information from uh, Propane Supplier Sunrise Cooperative. We have the uh, most recent um, uh, information packet from Regional Planning for a meeting that we had last week. We have Green County Council on Aging Insights Newsletter. Uh, we have uh, an announcement from the Green County uh, Public uh, Health Department regarding their uh, achievement achieving uh, accreditation status, uh, which had not been uh, uh, done in the past, which is really good for for them and for the county. Um, we have a, a November Board of Health minutes for their meeting, uh, their health commissioners report. Um, a Correspondence from Richard's off about the, the um, uh, planning commission, uh, a email back and forth between myself and our website designer who I'm going to have uh, give us a, an estimate on doing some website design on our new website, which is now active. Uh, it's alpha instead of beta. It is alpha instead of beta, oh, uh, yeah. and it includes the um, Miami Township annual report for 2017. Nice. Okay. It includes a new menu drop down for uh, Township finances, which I have um, high hopes that Don, you will be able to provide the file for that. Okay. So I can because nothing currently exists. And then there's the zoning. The new the new zoning changes are still being wow. retyped. And uh, my potential comprehensive plan is also now available at the request of the region. So, so <laughs> the, the link doesn't currently work. The fun facts. It, it worked in development, but it doesn't work live, so it's got to be I withhold payment for it. Out. Yeah. This is fun <laughs> facts or fun. Oh. No, what was it called? It was fun. No. This yeah. isn't the famous township quiz. No, this is the, this is the <laughs> fast facts. Is it oh, fast, fast facts. facts. Fast facts. Fast facts. That's what it is. 
Uh, we had a number of uh, submissions to our online burial search genealogical page for um, not corrections but additions to um, genealogical information. I, I, for I think that's cool. I didn't read them, but just the people have re replied to the publicity. I agree. I'm excited. Uh, I don't know why I've got a, 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 an order receipt. Well, I guess that just came in. That would guess go with Margaret. That's for a payment for our um, online backup carbonite. Uh, a reminder for uh, the Green County Township Association uh, Christmas party on the 11th. That would be a week from tomorrow. Hopefully everybody's RSVP'd themselves. Um, there's supposed to be some more in here. I probably will get to them. Oh, yeah, there are. The uh, fire rescue for uh, Sunday the 16th. With our RSVPs have already, oh no, they're still still good until uh, Wednesday. So, if there's, was it? if there's anybody. No, no, they were due. Wednesday the 5th, it said. Yeah, a little sticker on the side. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. November 30th. November 30th. Okay, so they haven't so. RSVP yet. Yeah, it's almost too late. I think we we called. I left a message for Jim. Oh, <laughs> well, that's the problem, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, sorry, sorry about that. Two. 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 Awesome. Yeah. All right. Cool. Yeah. Hey, yeah, you want to come too? Free food. <laughs> you have two. Yeah, two. Sure. Yeah, well. Prime rib. Mm -hmm. And some kind of chicken. Thing. So, have you now received responses from everybody? I think we now have everybody. Up here. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, and Dan. I'll what cross that off my list. Hotel. At the hotel. <laughs> you got to come dress in 1850s person now. So. It's a period thing. <laughs> Are you serious? No. <laughs> oh, no. She said yes. <laughs> you got the old tri-corner hat. Oh, I think my suit's probably 1850s. 1950s. Doesn't be that fancy. Had an interesting uh, email from uh, bikeohio.com about uh, roundabouts, you know, good old roundabouts, and how bicyclists uh, can get around a roundabout without being summarily <laughs> squished halfway around the roundabout. And how? Um, I hate to argue this. It's a township roundabout. No, <laughs> Ray Hensley's annual yeah, Christmas party on the 7th. That's Friday. That's a good one, says. Yeah, they're loading up on the Christmas parties. Yeah, says uh, Dan. <laughs> Dan likes those. Mm -hmm. uh, a correspondence between David Diamond, who had and myself about being on the agenda for the uh, 17th meeting. Um, you know, yeah, I sent him a reminder that he promised to give us prior information about the application and any draft resolution they had, so hopefully we will be seeing that pretty quick. Uh, email regarding the work that uh, Mike Harding did on our redesign for the Township website. A reminder from uh, Kim Layman, our, our MBRPC, about a Wednesday, December 5th, uh, stormwater. I will be there. Uh, Meeting that Mr. Hollister will attend. A message from Dan Montgomery from I guess this was just today. This isn't actually on the on the list, but I asked him just to make sure. Uh, I asked him to check the process progress of his value engineering work. Uh, it's still on schedule for a 116.19 ad insertion. I asked. Uh, his response was, "Chris, that's our goal. We've been working with Kevin, our best friend." Uh, to get the estimate updated and should have something on that within the next day or two. He's got his guys revising wall sections this week and hope to have that updated with the base plan to the consultants by the end of the week so they can update theirs and the goal is to submit the revised documents to USDA by January 4th for review and then able to advertise for the first time on the 16th. So and the sounds like they tentative be date for the on site Contractors are invited to come look at the look. Who has their calendar in front of them? Mm -hmm. uh, I got it. All right, so the 16th, and then what's the, what's the next? It's a week after the 16th. 
23rd. Okay, so that's the one thing. They're going to run it 16, 23, and 30, right? Mm -hmm. So that so it was the following week. So the meeting, the pre-bid construction meeting should be on the 23rd. Okay. It would, it would fall on the second meeting. Okay. Okay, so you're saying January 23rd. Further correspondence this afternoon or this evening. Turning them we'll move to the fire department report. All right. Uh, since the last board meeting, there have been 33 EMS calls, seven fire calls, and we conducted three fire safety inspections. Um, I forgot to put this in the report, so I'll tell you. Uh, I just wanted to thank uh, Lieutenant Ayer, the firefighter Brett Houseman, for spread it holiday cheer. Very nice. Uh, in here on the outside of the building. Um, that's the word of warning if you buy uh, the new fancy LED Christmas lights. Uh, you know, last forever because the LEDs don't get the bottom of the barrel cheap ones. <laughs> we bought them last year and half of them burned out. Really? <laughs> yeah. And only they last forever. Half the strands. So like half of a strand worked, but the other half didn't. So I authorized them to go buy some better ones. Because they started talking about splicing wires together, <laughs> they didn't burn down the firehouse. So, but a big thanks to them. So, they look cheerful. Um, also, something else I forgot to put on here. Uh, I've got two people finishing up EMT class. So, let's we'll keep our fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. They should test successfully Casey Brewer and pull on the weekends. So, uh, holiday party on Saturday. That's, no, it's not. It's Sunday, <coughs> December sixteenth, five to six. At five to six is the like social slash cocktail hour. Dinner is six ish at the Mills Park Hotel. Seriously, I didn't notice the timing. You mean it's not? It's not start at seven and, and eat at nine and get out of there at three. <laughs> well, it's a it's a Sunday. So we have uh, to I see. Okay. Apparently, people book things. <laughs> really early. <laughs> hotel, so. And then, uh, last but not least, uh, we're once again sponsoring New Year's Eve celebration downtown. Hmm. So. so, look forward to another exciting time with hot chocolate and whatever crazy things I can come up with. And we'll have the staff out there and we're going to go off flawlessly. I'm sure it will. It was really cold last year. It was insanely cold last year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was, don't open your door and go outside cold. It was year. that cold last year. As Johnny <laughs> Burns uh, from Public Works reminded me the other day when we were talking about the event this year. And I said, God, it was so cold. He's like, oh, was it? I was in the cab. I heated truck the entire time. Great things. So we did learn we need more hot chocolate. So we burned through that quickly. So probably 65 degrees at this point. Champagne instead. Mm -hmm. Is a champagne line, Margaret? Is, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. is there a champagne line in the budget? I don't think so. Oh! No. All right, sparkling yeah, wine. Know. Sorry. You have to study a little more closely. Uh, then. That's it. That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> Other than I didn't want to talk about. But <laughs> Florida was good. Did you want to report on that? Yeah, very good conference. The weather was wonderful. <laughs> when, when are we going to talk about? The real item. Let's talk about that right, right now. What do you think? And then Chris and I went to I a meeting this morning. Dot dot dot. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. assume that's what the real item is. <laughs> we went to a meeting this morning at Bath Township uh, with uh, representatives from Bethel Township, uh, View Creek Township, the city of Xenia, in as much as what she, what, she works for. Uh, she works technically for the police department. She's the 911 coordinator mm -hmm. uh, and dispatch supervisor mm -hmm. for the city of Xenia and Green County for that matter. And uh, the three trustees from Bath, Bath Township, the fifth officer, it was an actual public meeting for them. Um, they reviewed their status of, of where they are regarding uh, fire, fire and EMS protection for Bath Township, which they currently contract with the City of Fairborn for, and the City of Fairborn uh, 
has, has let them know that effectively January 1, they will be doubling their, um, their uh, cost for service from uh, roughly $600,000, $650,000 a year to a million hundred thousand dollars a year um, for 2019 and that's to go up another two or three hundred thousand dollars. One point two million for twenty for the rest of the term of the contract. So mm -hmm. twenty twenty through twenty three. <laughs> think. So they have been working with uh, with the townships that were at the table for the past well quite a while actually because they had a feeling this was coming uh, the last time they negotiated a contract with Fairmore and because they up their, I don't remember the numbers, they up their per run rates substantially mm -hmm. and, uh, and basically told them, you know, get ready folks because this is going to be cheap the next time. And so, uh, make a long story short, uh, we have all agreed in principle, we the townships uh, involved, Bethel Township, Clark County, Beaver Creek Township, Green County, and uh, Minor Township, Green County, to uh, provide service, service uh, fire and EMS service to different parts of Bath Township, that, which were bro broken down into zones, and those zones were uh, presented here in the packet from, uh, from Bath Township. Um, we've talked about that before, and we have worked out an arrangement uh, agreeable to both Miami Township and Bath Township uh, uh, for providing that service, and it's it's basically uh, for um, for one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year. Uh, we'll provide um, service to Zone Two. Is it Zone, zone Three? three. No, zone, zone Three. three. Zone Three. Um, the zone three averages ten runs per month. That, that average based on the last almost four years worth of service uh, from from the Fairborn records. Um, we'll do fire inspections as necessary. Correct. Um, I'm not sure. Yes. That's what's in here? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. I was. I didn't have a chance to talk about that this morning. But I'm not sure. <coughs> Inspections to maintain compliance with the state fire code oh, and yeah. Bath Township zoning. Oh. That's what it says. <laughs> that is fire inspection services that have to do with complying with zoning. Just in Bath Township. Yeah. yeah. Just in the in the zone three. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have seen two different. Uh, outlines. That is, there's a pocket development on the east side of Trabine Road that this map. Yeah, the other map they just is not, and then yeah, the other map the they just accurate. zipped by, yeah. and it made sense that this anything that's within the city of Fairborn would remains within the city of Fairborn. So pretty much any of the residential developments that have popped up in recent years. Are either in the city or in the city. Plus the scenic plant, or whatever it is out there. Yeah, here's the. Yeah, they did. He keeps doing that. <laughs> well, so, just so we're clear. Yeah, that will. That's city affair. So we will go out as far as Dr. Brownback's house. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We will go out as far as Dr. Brownback's house. I. Don't have any basis other than your competence uh, to judge the price. Hundred and ten thousand. Mm -hmm. How do, do you have a work paper, or, uh, or you know, were there th three key factors of consideration that you know? How do, how do we come up with this number? Initially, four years ago, I think when we first had this discussion, <laughs> we talked about. At that time, the city of Fairborn was billing on a fixed rate per every call they went on. It's thirteen or twelve hundred or three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so we ran some calculations and figured out that that's a lot of money for a fire and ambulance call. So we said we could do it at that time. I think for six fifty. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Um, round two came up, and I think we increased our price to 700 or 750. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this time, we were talking about doing a per call billing, but the other two entities, Beaver Creek and Bethel Townships, were just going to do flat, flat rate billing, just a year, yearly uh, rate. Um, and a preliminary meeting, one of the Bath Township trustees told us that Bethel was looking at something like $1,050 per call, that they would use them to say, okay, we're going to average this many. And, and then they told us, so we think you're actually going to underbill us. <laughs> Never wants to be underbilled, we said, well, so um, <laughs> came, up with, went better. came up with a higher number, and it worked out to be 110, which conveniently helps to cover the cost associated with adding a part-time position. To help this increase in drugs, which is approximately 104,000. So it gives us a little bit of work. Plus, we get to collect all the billing money, the EMS billing money. Uh, our zone in Bath Township's uh, profile is very similar to my township in Yellow Springs, so it's uh, middle to upper incomes with most of the insured people. The, the 10 runs a month, that's EMS runs, okay? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 10 runs. It averages 9.53 or something calls a month in that zone. We have the largest of the three entities. We have the largest geographic area, but the smallest number of calls. Uh, Bethel's zone has about 12, which I'm surprised about. And Beaver Creek's is 22 or 24. So yeah. Now, this record, uh, you Am I, am I right to interpret this that that is the, the listing addresses mm -hmm. that had runs and when they were and when they were mm -hmm. do we do that just off off topic do we do that for our own runs uh, yeah we, we have the capability to do that yeah. we don't typically run an address report just because people don't want their addresses I mean, right I, I, no, I, 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 but for this part this it helped us to take a look at I'm dominating here. I don't need to be the only one talking. Oh, no, no, that's fine. The, the EMS billing, um, what did we rough up, might might produce 30 plus thousand additional per year. Yeah, I mean, if we're at 10 calls a month, let's say, and this year is tracking higher than, mm -hmm. than the previous ones, but who mm knows? -hmm. Um, if we're at 10, you figure 70% are going to be EMS, probably 80% are going to be. And of those, 80% may be, you know, say, eight calls or EMS, maybe six are going to be transports. And that's the ones we get to build four, five, six. And an average rate of 450 a month. I mean, 450 a call. <laughs> and it all depends. You know, we'll get a better idea, obviously, once we start and see. <laughs> yeah, it's about 32,000 bucks a year. And that's assuming everyone's going to be middle. You know, the powers that be are shining down on us, and everyone who lives in uh, Bath Township is insured by the uh, Confectioners Union Pension Fund. And they'll pay the full price, and that's 800 bucks a pop. So. But I'm not holding my breath on that. <laughs> so, in, in addition to that, and there's, there's, there's so much wiggle room on some of these numbers, but you know, you've got to be able to rough it out somehow. We've kind of figured out that. Of the hundred, let's call it a hundred thousand dollars, just roughly the hundred thousand dollars that we're going to receive in order to put staff on um, to respond for the for the year. It's a, Bath Township is only going to use approximately twenty percent of that personnel time. So let's say that's twenty thousand dollars. So the additional. $80,000 is, for lack of a better word, found money for Miami Township for personnel costs, mm -hmm. um, which is not really a bad thing. So that helps. Um, this is a one-year agreement, uh, although it is a permanent plan, but this is a one-year agreement. And we've asked for it to be one-year agreement, so it gives us the flexibility of, 
of changing things as we go along. And the one thing I had thought about that really isn't addressed in this is like a major a major structural fire, you know, where we would have to commit large amounts of personnel time uh, and equipment being used and all those sorts of things. Not to mention we would be responsible for coordinating the mutual aid for something like that. Uh, no small uh, amount of time and effort for that. So that really hasn't been addressed in this. So we thought we'd make a, a one year kind of open ended, you know, and we'll take a look at the next time and see uh, how well things are working. But we are committed, I hate to use the P word, mm -hmm. permanently. <laughs> Starting January 1, is that right? January 1, yeah. Mm -hmm. If this agreement goes forward mm -hmm. to this right. plan. So have, the Bethel Township Board of Trustees is already committed. They're all set. Some of them are set like three years ago. <laughs> and Beaver Creek Township meets next Monday. But it sounded like the administrator and their trustees are all on board. And mm -hmm. Chief Anna Boss has kept them in the loop, and Dave doesn't really do anything unless he's got all his ducks in a row. So. Mm -hmm. Now, we are under no obligation to agree to this agreement tonight at our next meeting just you know by January 1st however I personally and the chief agrees with me that the sooner we do this the better because it will allow him to begin recruiting this new personnel as soon as possible mm -hmm. because he's going to have to provide seven additional staff members to uh, six I'm sorry six additional staff members to to uh, which isn't as bad as seven. No, it's, it's one less. <laughs> but that's that's <laughs> by January first. <laughs> they would be right. making up yeah. the equivalent of <coughs> one full time person. Correct. Yeah. Um, just for clarification, that so it's involving to cover this. Is it Bath Township that is most is the area mostly? Yeah, it's Bath Township. And then, but Bethel Township is. Bethel Township is covering. Another so, so it's Bethel, Miami, Beaver Creek, and Bath. I mean, well, the three of us are covering Bath Township. Bath Township themselves. Bath Township doesn't have their own deal. Right. 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 They currently contract with the city of Bethel. Right, right. Who covers all of it. But they'll be splitting it up into three zones that we'll cut that each of us will cover. Um. Thank you. Mark, I haven't heard you say anything other than that you talked about it two years ago. Actually, I, I would have to agree with you that uh, I'll go along with whatever Colin recommends, cost-wise and effort-wise. It's been my experience that uh, you know what you're doing. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> One additional thing to go along with this, you know, we're going to put this forward this evening, but something that we need to also consider is if we do, we need to um, uh, agree with the potential of offering a, uh, an incentive, a sign, basically a signing bonus for these, this new personnel coming on board to to um, uh, to help move things along in the next three weeks. And Colin's done a little initial research on uh, on signing bonuses for for staffing. And um, I would like to give him that flexibility to use uh, this hundred ten thousand uh, dollars. And I forget what's it broken down. Is it fifty right up front or? Yeah, it was 54, 54. Yeah, yeah I mean, it was 54. Or 56, 56, January 15th. Interesting date. And uh, that's why they're, I was in that date. Yeah, so. and 54,000 on July 15th. Oh, probably that's the video check. Yeah. Checks in the Is there, <laughs> have we used signing bonuses? I mean, I'm, I'm still in this. No. Volunteer mode. No, we've never used signing bonuses before, mm -hmm. but the market right now for fire, for new fire recruits, fire, paid people is extremely tight. Um, these would be all, assuming, I mean, 
why assume all part time? Why not one person full time or? It's actually cheaper for us to do it as part time okay. than, than full time, just because we don't have to worry about benefits. Yeah, these are so these these would be twenty four hour per week mm -hmm. personnel, which would bring them under the that threshold of, of providing um, um, both uh, medical and police and fire, right? Correct. Yeah, police and fire. Yeah. Threshold. Yeah, and they'd be at eleven fifteen an hour, which is the low end, unless they're already uh, if they're also a fire inspector. We go down. The signing bonuses would help us overcome that lower end. And, uh, well, I mean, you probably just said it. I missed the signing bonus. What we, what's the amount you think, or do you rather not say? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let's not. not yeah, I mean, I've, I've okay. got to do further research yeah. um, on that and, and see. But I found one policy that's a state policy. So it's at least applicable to government agencies. I mean, it's not our state, but at least it's. Mm -hmm. It's written. It's written in state ease, <laughs> government ease. So, but I think so that would definitely we help don't us. have a precedent. There are other departments. That yes, do. there are precedents um, for them. I mean, a lot of places will lure people with the promise of training, but we want people already trained so that we don't have to train them. Hmm. So signing bonus helps because we, you know, we don't have any benefits to offer them other than yeah, it's fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe Karen can put together like a Yellow Springs welcome package for them. But I'm like, a good holiday party mm -hmm. next year. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, any other questions for Tom or myself about this? I have another question. Okay. When you talk about a major fire incident, whatever mm -hmm. the phrase was, mm -hmm. does that mean such as the two we've had this year? Or yeah. <coughs> Exactly, something like that. <laughs> Fire relit, <laughs> had to go back. And, yep. and so uh, this agreement, there's nothing that mentions it. It's just that it's understood that after a year, that might be one of the experiences Sticking that would lead us to mm -hmm. price things differently. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And, and that is on, I mean, that is on paper in as much as it's in this that, that question and answer yeah. memo right. but it's not in the formal Correct. agreement. Mm -hmm. I think they're expecting, I mean I don't want to say expecting, but they understand that at least for us in Bethel mm -hmm. there might be some changes. And possibly for Beaver Creek, but Beaver Creek's obviously significantly bigger than all, both of us. Mm -hmm. um, as Dave as Chief Annabaugh said this morning, and this is small maybe pitties. three to four percent additional run volume for them and they just put on nine additional people, so it's, it's kind of like you know, whatever. Um, it's a little bit more, obviously, work for us in Bethel, and Bethel's busier than we are. I mean, Jacob said we do eight calls a day or something like that, mm -hmm. um, eight or nine, and we do three, so. Um, definitely for both of us, there's some flexibility that we can adjust. And Beth, they seem happy. I mean, I don't know what the other guys have quoted, but between the three of us, they seem very happy. So when you would respond to a major fire like that, all three departments would respond? It will depend on how we set up the uh, individual incident responses. So uh, the city of Fairborn, once the contract ends, from what we can piece together, will not be assisting mm -hmm. in the area. It's normally covered unless it's some horrible incident. Mm -hmm. So I mean, we probably work closely with um, the township, uh, Beaver Creek a little bit, uh, and some of the Clark County entities, like Houston, if he was the state of Oklahoma, Mad River, thank you, Mad River, mm -hmm. and possibly even Bethel. Yeah. I've never really worked with them. I've known Jacob for a few years. But <laughs> so, um, so yeah, but I've got to figure that out. Was, uh, Mike Bogan, who's a lieutenant in the city, was there this morning, but he does all the the run cards that they're called for, for in the computer dispatch system that says who gets called when and all that kind of stuff. So we, we talked briefly and it doesn't sound like it's a really big hassle. And I spoke with Chief Kyle Miller over at Cedarville today also who does a lot of that also. So it's not a big deal. And what didn't we find out that Wright Pat was in, in the mutual aid system? Yes. <laughs> yeah, Wright Pat is the mutual aid agreement. 
and the, the fire chief for Bethel Township is also the fire chief yes. for, for Wright Path, which is handy. <laughs> yes, it is very handy. Yeah, his full time gig is Wright Path, his part time gig is Bethel. Mm -hmm. well, this is the kind of thing I believe in. It's just sort of tiptoeing towards fire districts. Bethel is not out of the way. Yeah. Yeah, that station's right up there on the like, car. 571. Hall. Yeah, right off 571. Whoever yeah. is that. <laughs> <laughs> Goes up to Crystal Lake or Park mm -hmm. Manor, whichever, or Park Lane. Or Park Lane. Any other questions? If not, I'll make a motion to enter into an agreement uh, <laughs> for the provision of fire rescue, emergency medical, and fire inspection services from Miami Township, Green County, Ohio to Bath Township, Green County, Ohio, as laid out in said agreement in my hand. <laughs> we have a uh, motion and a second. Is there any further discussion regarding this agreement? Entering into this agreement? We will, we will also produce a resolution as a, from using this as the basis of the resolution, but for the moment, uh, we can officially enter into this agreement, and that's what this would be. Hearing no further questions, may we vote, please? Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Nature? Yes. <coughs> so I'll sign that and email it, scan it, email it back to their representative. We're we're not using a uh, county prosecuting attorney for our representation, uh, although they have been asked to do that, but they said they prefer not to simply because they represent both sides. And so they thought they couldn't, you know, be as, maybe as fair as they should. So who is this guy, yeah. Hill? Uh, this is a, an attorney that Bath Township has used for other matters, other township matters in the past. And they retained them for the uh, negotiation with them. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, because initially they were just talking, trusting the counselor, or trusting the administrator, or whatever. And then Fairborn retained an attorney for the negotiation. So that figured they should do that as well. Which apparently was a smart move. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else for the fire department this evening? Uh, pretty much new firehouse. Just spilled the whole beans with that one correspondence. That's that's all. That's all I heard back or forth. Beans there. have been spilled. Mm -hmm. So uh, we look forward to. Let me just double check. January sixteenth, and then. Yep. Another. Bid. What was our target for bid opening? Whatever our first meeting in uh, February would be. Um, all right. This is the 30, the first would be on or about the 6th. Is that right? Okay. I mean, the, the meeting is the 4th. Oh, yeah, no, the meeting is the 4th. So. The 4th or the 18th of February. I can't remember because there was a little period. It's the 4th. It was the first one. It was. Oh, it was the first one. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, because then. Yeah, that gives them enough time to review, I guess. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Um, Cemetery and Road, if I might yes, sir. tell a very brief story before we get started. <laughs> <laughs> interest to the crowd Ooh, and nice. general public, too. Anyway, um, yesterday I was out looking at roads uh, and driving here and there. and came upon South River Road, and I got halfway down South River Road, right across from um, um, Steve Heller's house. Wild Heller. Wild Heller, I'm sorry, Steve. And I said, hmm, there's a big old limb sticking right out in the middle of the road. I said, that's probably not a good idea. It wasn't actually right out in the middle of the road, but it was. It had already been out there, and it either, either fell and broke, or somebody clipped it and broke a chunk off, because it was, there were chunks of it all over the place. It was a pretty good-sized limb. So I said, oh, I'm a good township guy. I'll stop and 
see if I can't move this thing off the road. And it was a little, it was a little too heavy to push on my own. And I thought, well, maybe I'll get the chain out and pull it. <laughs> I thought, well, maybe I'll just get the old chainsaw out and cut a hunk of it off and off we'll go. So I went out and opened up the chainsaw thing and hmm, well, nothing in there. <laughs> I thought, well, that's, that's, not gonna, that's not gonna help me, is it? So, <laughs> so I said, well, okay. So I ran back to the garage real quick and got the other chainsaw out of the newer truck that had the salt in it, which I noticed didn't have salt in it, but anyway. Um, so I took it back out there and stopped traffic. Man, it's amazing how fast cars go down that road. I'm telling you, I realize it's 55, but it feels like they're going 155 when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're, when you're working on the road. So I get my chainsaw out, fire that baby up. Oh, wait a minute, one pull and, one the, pull and then the, and the handle broke. Well, <laughs> this is not my day. So I said, well, what shall I do? So I get in the truck and I said, this is a nice, this is a nice truck, but what the heck, it's probably got a push bar or it should have a push bar in the front. So I pushed that thing off the side of the road and, and, uh, and it, luckily it broke off a pretty good length of it as I was pushing. So I didn't have to push it very far or, or really risk damage in the truck. So we got that off. So that He's a good bumper. Yeah. Well, I use whatever hit. Whatever the, hit it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you're saying we don't have a chainsaw anymore. Well, no, let, me, let, me, let me, I'll figure the rest, get the rest of the story. <laughs> so off I went and he said I was on South short. Yeah, this is a short story. Uh, <laughs> went down South River Road and then went up Kyle Road and got halfway to Zot's house and uh, lo and behold, here's this great big branch out there. Felt like a big branch that was that had looked like it had just fallen because it knocked the mailbox oh, yeah. on the way down, and it was sitting. It wasn't across the road, but it was right on the berm. I thought, hmm, in the middle of the night, somebody's gonna come by and hit that thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be happy. And unfortunately, I didn't have a chainsaw to cut it, <laughs> but it was small enough that I could, I was able to push it off with the uh, with a bumper. Uh, so that. Now, that leads me to this, Daniel. This is Christmas time, and the Board of Trustees is feeling very generous, so I would propose that tomorrow morning when you come to work, you stop by a conference and you buy yourself three nice brand new chainsaws, and so we'll have, because in the, in the future, when Don and Mark and I are out there <laughs> clearing roads, you know, we like to have dependable equipment, and you know, so, why don't we get one for a backup, that way we don't have to worry about that. And we have two nice new ones, which I know you're going to use uh, a, a lot, because like we talked about last meeting, at least in Glen Forest, I'm not sure about Clifton Cemetery, but I would like to get all those limbs out of there now. now. All the ones they're that gone. are down. Oh, but then they all left today. All right. <laughs> they didn't leave last week because they had anything. Mm -hmm. I know. But, but they all left today. Okay. I didn't know about South River or Powell because I went out that did, did they live? Did they leave in Clifton too? Yes. Okay. Well, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Sometimes a little slow, but I didn't get it done. All right. And mm -hmm. I would also like you to find a new home for all those chainsaw bodies that are lying around <laughs> in the garage. There's at least a half a dozen. They all were. Well, I wouldn't know that. <laughs> so I'll make the area strictly for <clears throat> that just put a they, put, they a, run, they all run. put a so new they chainsaw or a, yeah, so put a new chainsaw and each truck. Okay. So it has a saw. So when we go out and clear the roads. I'm all for good chainsaws. The, do they have to be new? They do have to be new. Oh yeah. If we're gonna buy them, why why would you buy a used one? But I mean if, you, if we already have functioning ones. We have, we could use another small one. We have old ones. We have old ones that are hard to start. Well, I don't want to fiddle around. The, the yeah. last time I was out where it was raining like crazy on high road and that tree was down and, and the cop was there, I tried pulling that chainsaw out of the truck and starting it. I couldn't get the it same, started. The same little saw. The, yeah, the one the that the head broke. Yeah. Usually it hits pretty good, you know, like choking two, three pulls, it hits, take it off. So for <clears throat> okay, sure. get the new saws. What do you do with? What are we allowed to do with old equipment? Well, we 
You can't burn it. So sell it. Through, doesn't the county have a <laughs> that organizes a, a sale for local governments? I don't think they do this anymore. Do they? They do the county auction. There, there's, there's really no value. <coughs> okay, for the twenty-five dollar or thirty dollar. How are you going to do that? So anyway, so off to your report. Mm, okay. But, uh, Bye, yeah, <laughs> I'll, I'll get another couple of small ones. I'll get the okay. last half. Yeah. Okay, got it. What do you, what do you use? Uh, still. Oh, cool. So there, was, there was only one brand. Yeah. Well, that was something that they said here like a uh, uh, Tuscarora. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, they say we, we, get, we get this kind of one still. Yeah, it still got state. Yeah, you have state state contract prices. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay, cemetery. Uh, no burials. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Uh, my next thing was branches are all gone. Yeah. <laughs> Did we get those cleaned up today? We got a new telephone pole behind the building today. Mm -hmm. yeah, the old one broke. <laughs> broke was leaning and they went and took the pole down and tied the wire up so it wouldn't harm anything in the village. Okay. Yeah, Power right. pole or telephone pole? Telephone pole, right behind the building. Mm -hmm. It broke off a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Laying over behind the wire real tight. <laughs> the pole gone. Evidently it was on the list to be replaced anyway. So they, it's not a telephone pole, it's got to be a power pole. A power, a telephone pole holds power on. It feeds our building. Telephone Some only pole. hold telephone well, wires. This one holds electric. You would go up 343? <laughs> you would go up 343? Yeah. A lot of poles hold on the model bell. Yeah, mm -hmm. they snap all the time. Yeah. But we have to do it down there if it's cool. Yeah. Okay. We fix it too. Uh, that our water leak evidently is under the road because the last ice event it was not no it was not frozen there so it's obviously warm. You can see right across the road the leak must be underneath the road. Wait, on which road? Mm -hmm. Innocent. If that valve's turned off, how can it be leaking? It's leaking. Yeah, that must be leaking. Uh, there's there's some it's still leaking. <coughs> that one? My house shut off valve doesn't shut off. That could be because it's mm -hmm. still leaking. But I had shut that off in the in the fall, and I've taped that. You know those valves that open those those spigots. Yeah. They're they're pressure valves. They're not turn valves. You you push them and you have to hold them, and we know it leaves them on. Right. Well, I tape them open. So that for the winter, winter. Right. And no water comes out of them. Well, maybe it's line feeding that that where our valve is. It's still leaking. We have water because I found it very Obviously, got leaks on mm -hmm. But I noticed on the last, the ice last week, you know, a bit of ice or something. That's props. It was obviously getting moisture and warmer in there. That's how I think it's going to So I'm going to have to investigate something. Mm -hmm. But it, it could be a feed line. I don't know. Well, you know, we shut the valve down, it was leaking really bad. And then we shut that little water off, it seemed to settle down quite a bit. Yeah, uh, I mean, I haven't looked at a water bill for a month or two. Margaret, has the water usage been up? Yep. Well, do you recall what it is? Double. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's usually it's generally ten dollars a month, but this month it was twenty-two dollars and eighty-eight cents or something like that. Did they raise your rates a little bit? I don't think so. I don't know. All I know is there that is an it's, 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 it doesn't mean, you know. I just looked at the bill. Something's still leaking because. <laughs> Because the water bills twice. No, no, but there's something going on, yeah. So sometimes I don't know. I might have to open it It's all over the place. Yeah, it's all over the Oh, big tree down by the National Barrel on the road back to the shed. Big tree down. Really? You get to get back there. People are too wet, soft to be back there messing around. But it's not hurt anything right now. Yeah, a bit Soon as it's that big cherry or something came out. Mm -hmm. Like the word. Ground tightens up on the fair with a little money chainsaw. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
it's going to be a 16 inch saw or a 13 or whatever those little guys are. <laughs> you can do a lot of cutting. We have a bigger saw. Yeah. That's all I had. Okay, anything, anything else for the cemetery, Sexton? Mm. How about the road administrator? Um, yeah. Did we set a meeting? At 10 o'clock on Friday. Are you going to that zoning conference mm -hmm. on Friday? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, you need some cold You know, we talk about you know people not being able to put asphalt, the asphalt plants shut down and stuff, but here all of the village here in the last couple of days, they've been putting down asphalt like it's the middle of July. Really? Yeah. Are they using a hot box? Are they pulling it out of a trailer? It's no, it's a, off it's, truck? a it's a big truck with a you know the regular thing. The problem does use a Butler place. asphalt, you know have you ever heard of butler asphalt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't think so. Uh, they were putting it down. It was those two new houses on Main Street. Butler's putting it in? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's yeah, they're probably running out of drinks and probably uh, eating. Probably eating. We can't. I mean, if you use hot mix for it, I'm going to see if it sets up for it. It's all down. Mm -hmm. Hot mix can't cool off. It's hard. Cold patch, we can use your round. So, I'm going to go get a couple tons of cold patch for now. I guess where I was going was, you know, if, if those guys could put something down, couldn't they put a strip or two on Houston Road or, you know, where it's really breaking up? Or wouldn't they do that small amount? I'm not sure they would do that. Uh -huh. I mean, they're doing driveways and parking lots. Why would That's not a whole lot different than down the middle of the road for they're 50 feet. The village? No, no, no. This is private. This is for Home Inc., actually. That's what they're well, uh, what I've seen has been for uh, Vectra. Correct. Those, they were doing two at, the, two at the same time, but it was a different company. And so it's like six by six plate or patch. Right. We're trying to stuff. Sticking Probably doing for all these gas lines. Yeah, yeah. they're doing yeah. for fixing all that stuff. Mm -hmm. hmm. It doesn't look like they're stuck. I mean, I can call down the valley and see if they're running by stuff and use using the top box for a couple times as long. Hot box, keep it warm. Mm -hmm. But you know, put it in the truck. The temperature is so cool off fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't know. Whatever you think is best for, for keeping those keeping those big. Well, I think I put cold patch in, even out in Houston, if I took the roller roller in. You think? That's not very deep. Well, cold patch will be good on the shallow stuff sometimes. You know, not, not a little bit. But, you know, if it's half inch or about like that, it works pretty good. Yeah. But you got to get it powdered down. You know, roll down. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna get some cold patches to use with it. I'll call the alley. That's fine. Who's got the roller or you got it back now? We have it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh we'd like to try to burn a pit this week sometime. Mm -hmm. Good week for it. Hopefully. Do a, do a what? Burn the pit where we don't. Yes. We, it's pretty full. Cool. It's yeah. not present, but it would like to get it burnt. Good. Yeah, we tell you I went by there a month or so ago, and here the gate's wide open, and there's some big, big truck. I mean, big like, you know, of the big county trucks or the, you know, the one we used to sell, we used to have, or whatever. But a big truck back in there with a, with a trailer like 40 feet long behind it, up against there, and about three or four guys throwing crap into the pit. Uh, holy mackerel, they're going to fill that thing up. That would be your zoning, man. Hmm? No way. Yeah. We had a bunch of honeysuckle or something to get rid of. So you take it out there, I'm going to burn a pit. Where do you get the equipment? Bob's, Bob uh, McLean. Bob McLean's still truck and trailer. <laughs> okay. He asked, can we put it? It's on there, I said, sure. Yeah. Okay. I was, I'm gonna, I was just surprised how big a piece of equipment was back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loads it all in the trailer by hand and unloads it by hand. No kidding. <laughs> all right, well, that answers that question. Our gravel should be here this week.
Yeah. 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 Saturday afternoon conversation with Dan Robineau on Glen Road. Uh, you may recall it was a very warm day, wet day, and there was water going across the road, and then I, we, we just looked together. He hadn't really looked, but there is, we found one culvert under the road, and I, it, we found where water seemed to be running from somewhere on the downhill side of the road. Didn't see any culvert, but it was... There's a culvert. Mm, well, it, 40, 30 feet from anyway, the one Anyway, this, really, well, this doesn't have to be in the meeting, but just that there are some drainage issues there. You, I know you've done other things there the last year. Something must be pleasant to use and drains in that one uh, pretty good. He's got a catch basin at the corner of his driveway. It's been plugged up for years. Well, it... And I don't it, sure it, 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 it he was, work. he's happy to, I shouldn't say, he sounded willing to do stuff himself or pay for stuff if he knew what to do. Well, I'll, I'll be taking a look and see what's going on. He's, he's there, you know, when he's in town, he's there, you know, he's retired, so. Yeah, he's, he runs in now all the time. I think I've got it. Uh, just quickly, your drainage pipe on Lamont go in okay and yeah, to be doing the job? Yeah, to be draining just fine. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Looked at it today, as a matter of fact. Let's say I'll get some dirt on it so we can get some dry dirt. I'll go out there and dress that up for it. Mm -hmm. So we can get some dry stuff. Mm -hmm. Back to fire real quick. Did you ever hear from Otarma about the new coverage? Damn it all the heck. Yes? I did. Okay. Some so, tell them about Yeah, I'll give you the highlights. I'll write your memo because it's all going to do. But um, they're proposing, uh, so I think I gave you guys a, the thing that they, uh, they being Otarma, looked at our coverage and then we submitted our, our inventory over the summer and they found currently of a blanket, like $145,000 loose equipment policy. Uh, we have about $580,000 in loose equipment. They felt that we were substantially underinsured there. Uh, and found stuff like our radios, that stuff wasn't covered. So they're proposing to break it out, and I'll have that for you. Um, by the end of, like some of the individual stuff, basically it's a $800 increase mm -hmm. in the premium to cover all that stuff for something like or 500000 for that. Apparatus a little bit different that I think you guys will take one thing to look at and see because they're proposing going to actual replacement value. Um, so if the truck rolls down the hill, we actually get the money to replace it with a new truck versus, and Chris and I have been there, <laughs> done that with an old ambulance that was crashed and the insurance company that time only gave was like 25000 bucks for a $85,000 remount. Um, that's more expensive. Yeah, we're, we're looking at uh, $4,171 increase to add $1.2 million of coverage. Mm -hmm. I don't know how necessary it is on the entire fleet, but certainly some of the more you know, the ambulances would be nice to have. Mm -hmm. this one. But I'll uh, memoize that and put it in the boxes tomorrow so you guys can take a look. Can we pick and choose on what Yes. <clears throat> yeah, he said we could definitely mm -hmm. kind of like cafeteria plan mm -hmm. that. I mean, the, the loose equipment, I'd like to just go with the whole yeah. recommendation because right. we have a lot of stuff. And our inventory that they had received, I guess, from DFIS, who received it from whoever was before, mm -hmm. good lord, I didn't realize we hadn't updated stuff. I mean, there was, my goodness, we haven't had a catastrophic loss here because most of our loose equipment wasn't on there, so. Did they um, value the building? Not yet. No, that, I, I didn't have that on my thing. December 13th. But so that's a separate company. That, oh. I mean, it's provided by Otaro, but it's a separate appraisal company. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Uh, moving right along. Ms. Boxer, please. Two resolutions. First one is resolution 2018-52, amendment of permanent appropriations. Um, the general fund increased the uh, Bureau of Workers' Comp by $154. I'm not sure why, but the Bureau of Workers' Comp mailed an invoice to pay by this month for the entire year of 2019. Not sure what they're doing because they usually just give us money back anyway. But um, <clears throat> um, anyway, so um, increased uh, so all the funds needed increases in Bureau of Workers' Comp. Anyway, the general fund increased that by $154 in travel and meeting, ex meeting expenses by $150. In Road and Bridge, the Bureau of Workers' Comp was increased by 198. The cemetery fund, water and sewer, was increased by nine dollars because, well, there's something wrong. <laughs> and um, contracted services in the cemetery fund was increased by 3,750. That's to pay for Cedar Bill, Cedar Views, fourth installment of their annual contract that was discussed at the last meeting. Um, the fire fund, uh, BWC, was increased by 14, 1,440. Travel and meeting expenses increased by 150, and natural gas was increased by $50. And EMS billing, training services were increased by $1,000. Is there a motion to approve resolution 2018-52? I have to make that motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Motion on second for a discussion regarding this resolution. Hearing none, may we vote, please. And Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Meacher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Second resolution is um, quite familiar, I'm sure, to Mark and Chris, Tom, but this is um, it's the resolution accepting the amounts and rates as determined by the Budget Commission and authorizing necessary tax levies and certifying them to the county auditor. And this is based on basically the uh, public, the tax budget hearing that I went mm -hmm. to this summer and presented, you know, what our. Um, what monies we expect to get in 2019. And they basically then, upon looking at our numbers and so forth, they agree to the tax levies and the percentages. Um, and she said that they basically used what, based on what they know so far, specifically for the, the bond levy. And the rate is um, at 1.95 and expected to generate 304000 for the year. What was that rate on the ballot? It was two something, wasn't it? Um, yeah, um, but that was that was anticipating a much higher percentage um, interest rate. I, I understand, but, but just that two people are paying a lower rate mm -hmm. than we originally voted on. Well, yeah, but it's going to it's going to change, right? But you know, every once in a while. But I think it's. It's worth mentioning. Oh, sure. mentioning that yeah. uh, you're not allowed to have it be higher, but you can be lower. That's why they, that's why we go do that tax budget because they need to hear from us that we do need the money that the tax you know we do need the tax dollars that um, they're collecting. And the general contractor too. Uh, anyway, that's another that's another story. Yeah. So together. I would like to have a check at that before I sure. vote yes. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's so long. Well, I was looking at that, Margaret, the other day, did you sign the payroll certifications? No, I'm sorry. I'll get those to you. Okay. Didn't sound like you really signed. Oh, I'm really sorry. Yeah, okay. Did you have anything else, Mark? No. I'll move adoption of that resolution. We have a motion. I'll second that. We have a second for the discussion regarding resolution 2018-53. Ms. Mutcher? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. 
we don't have a zoning inspector's report. He's going to uh, change over uh, this month or this meeting for next meeting. And the two interesting uh, items on the agenda. Um, yes. So, uh, which brings me. Do you think? I, do you think um, you should contact either one of the people <coughs> on the agenda and kind of stagger when they show up? Do you think they would be either one would be more or less inclined to come? You know, half an hour. I'll do that. Early or late. I'll check with okay. Dale Arnold and with David Diamond. Okay. I just, just thought of that earlier. That's a great name. David Diamond. Sounds like a gambler. Mm -hmm. Professional gambler. Sounds like a professional wrestler for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's trumpet, actually. It's a trumpet player. Oh, well, that, that works too. Uh, I'd be happy to share this piece from our OSU Extension Agency, the Extension Service on uh, solar farm lease considerations. Okay, great. Uh, background for the Arnold next meeting. Put that in the uh, uh, for review. And I distributed that at the Tecumseh the Land Trust's Land Owner Resource Gathering. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, all right. So we're back to zoning, or we're still on zoning. And the only issue I have with zoning is, you know, we're obviously we're going to continue our search for uh, apparently replacing a couple of zoning commission members. But Don doesn't know this. Mark knows this. This is the time of year when we generally approve a. Uh, um, uh, a gift card for each zoning commission member for their service you know, as an appreciation, a token of our appreciation for their service for the, for the past year. Um, and we have done for many years uh, a $100 card. So I see no reason it's not appropriate that we don't continue that. Mm -hmm. and I'll make the motion that we do offer that for our zoning commission members this year. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any discussion? Uh, has, th this has passed the uh, state auditor. It has passed it for 20 years. Okay, I'll, I'll support you. Okay. Mm -hmm. No further discussion, may we vote please? Mr. Major? Yes. Mr. Crockett? Yes. Mr. Hollister? Yes. This morning that uh, I'm double booked tomorrow evening for a meeting, uh, both at the farm forum, I think that's it called, mm -hmm. and this commissioner's meeting where we get our our pretend <laughs> check. Uh, and since I went out of pocket for the farm forum, I'm either going to have to call and cancel my participation at the commissioner's meeting or. Certainly, anyone, any other elected official of the of the group would like to go and represent us and receive the uh, accolades and uh, and press and photo ops and whatever else they're going to provide. Maybe it's a bunch of cookies. I don't know. Um, you're more than welcome to. Is there any interest? I'm also going to the farm forum. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Where is this? Uh where we're giving the award? Uh, in that, in that uh, office uh, where you go to the budget con budget hearings next year. year. Courthouse. Okay. Remember? So this is a uh, grant from the commissioner. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just a Something like $5,000. And what time is it? <laughs> I'll double check, Mark. I believe it's mm -hmm. at... Uh, I believe it's at seven. Okay. I, I do have that information though. Okay. Um, I think it's around ours is around sixty eight hundred. Yeah, well that, it was a per capita. Right. 
Mr. Pierce. Because I, I, I need to uh, clear it with Gail, mm -hmm. and, uh, since she's driving it. Yeah. Well, if you could go, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. I know they'd appreciate it. Yeah, I'd like to. So we'll uh, check it out. Okay. All right. Actually, I'm, I'm fairly confident it's 7 o'clock. You think? Okay. So I saw an email about being a special meeting. All right, any other new business this evening? Any old business this evening? We'll be covered. Hearing nothing further, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second that. Move second. It is so ordered. Oh, well, this is a big day in the expanding the territory of 